What's up guys and gals? Welcome back to Dog Sled Saga. My name is Splattercat and I'm happy to have you here today as we ask, I think this is Raleigh right here. I don't know why I, I mean, this is Raleigh. So anyways, we can ask some more questions. Let's ask about Humbleberry's favorite. Humbleberry's favorite thing is placing up. She will get a happiness boost from passing other teams. Okay, so Humbleberry likes to win. So I'm going to note that, although I think it goes onto their character sheet, so... Let me take a look here. So we can pass that. Let me take a look at, you can afford to hire another dog. Not now. Our dogs don't have any fatigue because they're running in the positions that they have the best aptitude for. There it is. So specialty is in the middle. Personality is steady. Aptitudes. Okay, so it unlocked all the aptitudes. So as a wheel dog, very able. As a middle dog, she's a natural. Wait, is Humbleberry a female? Yeah, she's a natural. Her fault we haven't figured out yet, but they do all have faults. So, for example, there's one fault that's particularly annoying. There's a fault where if you go past a refeeding station or a restocking station while the dog is hungry, they'll eat all the biscuits out of the station like a drive-by eating. Oh, it's the worst. It's terrible when that happens, especially when you only have, like, one biscuit left. It's really, really bad, so it'll, it'll be upsetting. I think... Well, you'll forgive me. I'm writing down the dog's trait right now, but let me have a look here. Favorite thing? Okay, so it is noted right there. Everybody's happiness is looking pretty good. Let's take a look at all the dogs, though, and make sure that we haven't potentially missed something. We still don't know Fossil Fonger's aptitude, which I'm I'm worried that Fossil Fonger is the odd man out right now. I think that Triple Tickets and Humbleberry are perfect. I think they're exactly where they need to be. So Triple Tickets, yeah. Oh, Triple Tickets, yeah, Natural Middle. So we've got a Natural Mid... We've got a natural lead, and so now we need to track down somebody who's a natural wheel. I really sincerely hope that Fossil Fonger is a natural wheel. If Fossil Fonger isn't, then I don't know what to say. We're going to have to drop Fossil Fonger, and maybe... I'm hoping we can find Fossil Fonger's aptitude, so then we can keep... Maybe if this, if, maybe if the dog doesn't fit into this team, we can keep it in reserve for another team. So, we'll see what happens. I can run an errand right now, but I think we're going to run one more race. I want to run a couple races and just level up the dogs a bit further before I go into the next league, because the next league is a bit more challenging. So, I'll probably do, like, maybe two more races in this league, and then once we've got a little bit of money and cash stacked up, we'll consider jumping into a different league and seeing if we can make a bit more money. Middle dog's already tired. Wheel dog's tired. Front dog's looking okay. There it is. Front dog's hungry. Bam! Got them taken care of. Now, you want to aim for dead center in the dog's back if you're trying to feed them and get the perfect thing that makes them trigger their abilities. Just in case you were wondering what causes that, you got to get it, like, dead center in the middle of their back if you really want that to trigger. And there's also a timing to it. You have to do it within a certain amount of time before... Well, you have to do it within a certain bracket of the tiredness showing up or the hunger showing up. So, oh, that dog fell back slightly. Let's keep him spaced. Okay, there's a perfect throw right there. That's going to be helpful. Front dog needs a little bit of biscuit. And so a little bit of biscuit is what he's going to get. Let's throw that over there. There we go. I'm going to try and keep my spacings positive. Spacings are looking pretty good right now, though. The front dog keeps falling back slightly, but I think that's just because... Ooh, I hit a tree. Okay, so I was wondering what trees do. They block your biscuits from flying. Now I know. So when you're going past a tree that's in the foreground, don't throw biscuits. It'll get... Oh, we're about to actually run up on a bunch of people right here. Let's go ahead and keep biscuits on all of our dogs. And in fact, I think we're in a... Oh, I missed that one. Hold on. There we go. I think we're in a decent position to take first place. I am a little bit worried about our speed right now, though. It doesn't look like we're actually making it the way that I prefer. Come on. Oh, there's still one gate left. We're magical. Oh, head bop. Booty bop. I think we got this. There we go. All right, let's work on our spacing for right now since we are indeed out of biscuits. All right. There it is. Past that awesome looking house. What a gorgeous house. We took the lead right there by only a little bit though. The first place guy typically... This game is more of a... It's not really a speed test. So what I would say about this game is that it's a test of your ability to do the various tasks that are required on any on any course, and if you do them perfectly, you will just barely beat the first place guy. If you do not do them properly, then you're going to have some trouble. You're probably going to get second place if you get like a couple tangles and things like that. And so you just got to be ready for it. Favorite thing, skills. Okay, fantastic. Skills are looking good. Skills at level 2, so now their skills will occur with level 2 frequency. What else do we have here? Let's talk about perfect timing. When you feed a dog right when they really need it, you'll know that the timing was perfect. Not only will your team stay at full speed, but you'll be efficient with your food bag and your dogs will gain extra skill. 
So it's pretty much a no-brainer that we really, really, really want to make sure that our biscuits are hitting right where they need to go. I was going to say, why is Fossil Fonger sitting right now? That makes me slightly nervous. You, sir, are not supposed to, sir? Yes, sir. You, sir, are not supposed to be sitting right now. I just wanted a St. Bernard. I will have one one day. I think we're ready for the next league. We can at least try and qualify. Let's go ahead and we'll go over to the league. So what's going to happen for League 2? We pay 600 Golden Snowflakes and we will do a placement race. If we get anything other than first place, we lose and they refund 75% of the 600, which I believe is 450 of it. So there's not a whole lot to lose right here. You get the money back except for like a little tiny fee. Let's go for it. Let's give it a try. I like where everybody's at. I like our team right now. It's looking really, really good. This team is so much better than my last team. I was in a tricky situation with my last playthrough where I was constantly buying new dogs because I just couldn't get them into the position that I want them to be. There we go. Keep doggies all... Did the music change? I think the music changed. The music sounds a little bit more just like Nintendo-y. Sounds a bit more epic. Okay, front dog needs food as well. Throw that out there. Bam! Take care of... Her hunger. Oh, that was a short one. Yep, threw that one short. Oh no, the cameras blinded me while I was trying to throw food to my dogs. We only have one biscuit left. There we go. There's our restock. I was hoping we would get that in just a second. I was like, eh, we're not looking so good right now. All right, so keep them fed. Then we'll worry about the line spacing. There we go. Line spacing's looking pretty good. Wheel dog's looking hungry. Mid dog's looking hungry, which means we can reasonably assume front dog's going to be looking hungry real soon too. Oh, and we need a jump right there, so we're going to triple tap to jump over the rock. You remember, like, dog sledding has jumps in it, right? Oh, the dog is barking. That means his special skill just activated. We need to watch him and figure out what it is, though. I'm actually going to keep this where it's at, because there we go. I didn't think any of the dogs were hungry. Bam! That double catch right there, that's what you get cameras for. If you can throw two and have them hit at the exact same time. Sort of a big deal, you know. Oh, good, our lead dog has the... Oh, they both do! Both of our dogs have the charge... Okay, so there's this... There's a different skill. It's a skill called, I think, charge. And it means that your dog will randomly just, like, go ham mode on the track. And two of our dogs have it, and they both double triggered right there. How crazy is that? We've got a little bit of time left until the end of the race. We do want to keep our game tight for right now so that we can qualify for League 2. Oh, that one's going to miss. Oh, no, it's not. Eh. All right, so I... I've been I've been making mistakes. If you do if you make a throw too early, just hold the clicker down and just let it rotate back and forth until somebody's hungry again. It looks like that dog right there, his special ability is occurring. You can see that exclamation point and they're glowing blue. That means their special ability is at work, but I don't know what his is. These two though in the front, they have the dash or the charge skill where they just go and they go like DBZ mode and they just run as hard as they can when they're skill procs and so that's really good. If you don't know what a proc is, a proc is a programmed random occurrence. It basically means that there's just like a percentage chance that something will happen. It's dice rolls inside. The, it's it, it's a dice roll inside the game's engine. That's all that it is. And so if you've got a 15% chance to crit and you crit, well, never mind. It's on a current, so it's not going to be crits. So let's say that you have like a knife in a fantasy game that you stab somebody with, and it has a chance for it has a chance to set the guy on fire. The chance to set the guy on fire is the programmed random occurrence. That's the proc. I don't know how many people in my audience play MMOs and will know that term. It's a, it's a common term in MMOs, but if you don't play MMOs, I don't think people would know it. I think they also use it in programming. Pretty sure it's used in programming. So, Fossil Fonger and Humbleberry both will be approached by sponsors because their fame level has gone up. Skill has increased for both of these dogs. That's good. Everybody got their favorite thing, and so it's looking real, real good for our main team. What's going on here? Sponsors. So... We can get better lines, we can get a better sled, we can get a better food bag, or we can get weekly funding. I think I would rather go for... Let's try out the sled. I bet it makes us go faster or something. Oh, they both get an endorsement? Hell yeah. Okay, I'll take a food bag and a sled then. Awesome! So, we can go with barking. Apparently, I've never done this one, but I the barking means that their ability is about to go. When your dogs bark, their unique skill just came out. They'll probably do something useful. The frequency of their skill is based on their skill level. I can help you put a finger on each dog's skill if you're observant with them. Alright, so we're having a good day right now. I mean, how often are you approached by two different groups that will offer your dog spawn? I feel, I feel kind of useless in this whole thing, though. My dog has, like, sponsorships and is, like, on the front of Wheaties boxes and stuff, and I'm just, like, this guy hanging onto a sled in the back. Where's wh When do I get to be on the Wheaties box? I want to be on the Wheaties box. I mean, at least me, like, in the background with, like, a thumbs up, like, yeah! Like, cheering my own dogs on or something. 
This is going to be League Challenge Average. Weather's looking pretty good. One foliage. Oh, the track is short, though, which means we have to win, and we have to win decidedly. So let's be on our way. This could have been a double whammy for us. You saw how we had a race that was right after our first race. So with back-to-back -back double headers like this, your dogs do run a chance of getting tired. But it didn't happen, so we don't have to worry about it. I mean, I don't know what else to say about it other than that. I mean, I would say to normally worry when you get back-to-back -back races, but nothing terrible happens, so I'm okay with it. Let's keep the line spaced. Our St. Bernard needs to be fed. Front dog and mid dog are both looking like they need to be fed right now. So let's get those going. I'm going to throw out a biscuit to our St. Bernard, our wheel dog, real fast before we get to the restock station. Oh, we need to jump right here. There we go. Jumping over rocks. I'm going to throw those out. There we go. Keep everybody fed. And there we go. I was going to say, somebody's going to get hungry here. Somebody's going to get hungry. I know it. Bam! They're pretty good at catching. They're pretty good at catching. My dog couldn't catch stuff out of the air like that. It just kind of hits him in the face. I don't have a dog right now, but anyways, the dog that I did have, when you would throw stuff to him, it would just kind of like hit him in the face, and then he would let it fall to the ground. Like, you would you would underhand it to him. You know, you're trying to train your dog to catch stuff out of the air. Anyways, you underhand like a bit of kibble at him or something. He'd just be like, Argh! and he'd just like block it with his face intentionally so that he wouldn't have to catch it with his mouth. Not the sharpest tool in the shed. But he was adorable, so that's really all that it takes sometimes. That's really all that it takes. Never doubt the importance of appearances. I'm going to throw to there, and I'm going to try and get these both. Ah, I messed it up. I double messed it up. Not only that. Okay, so we have a charge skill right there. Oh, we're in first place. Hell yeah. Awesome. Fantastic. I would love to ask about Fossil Fonger's skill, though. That's what I'm concerned about. If you're having trouble with this game and you're not winning as much as I am, don't worry about it. Like, I've played this game quite a bit before I started doing... Oh, we got fatigue up. That means I didn't feed him fast enough. That's unfortunate. Now, this will decay over time, so it's not that big of a deal. However, skill 3 is up right there. Skill increased. Okay. Let's ask about Fossil Fonger's skill. There it is. That's what I want to know. Has the charge up skill. When this skill kicks in, he can be fed extra food for a speed boost. Oh, okay. I hadn't thought about that, but all right, that works out. So that means with our wheel dog, we need to be careful about applying biscuits liberally when he has that little exclamation point above his head. So I'm going to note this on the page in front of me because you can't look at your skills list while you're in a race, and my memory's bad enough to where I just try and keep it in front of me. So extra food for Fossil Fonger. That makes sense given the St. Bernard. Yep, St. Bernards do eat a lot of food. Anyways, let's continue. We can afford to hire another dog. We have $1,600 right now. I think for a wheel dog, it's most important for wheel dogs to be obedient. Hmm. Well. We have Coco, but let me go back here real fast. Let me see... We can enter for League 3, God, I don't care. Alright, let's go back. So we have six races right here. What I wanted to look at, so he is obedient already. I wish I knew his aptitude so that we can figure out if we need to swap him out or not. We also haven't figured out anybody's faults, but faults only tend to happen when bad things happen, like you get passed, or faults will happen if you like miss a jump. Basically, just don't mess up, and typically you don't have to worry about faults too much. I think we should probably start searching for another wheel dog. It's disappointing because I do like Fossil Fonger. I guess we could leave him as a backup dog, but the the problem is that these two are so perfectly in position right now. So yeah, you see right there when you rest, you get a little bit of fatigue back, but it will stack up on you, so be careful. We'll go ahead and have the dog rest, and we'll have them run. Oh, look, snow quality is still pristine, but it's got a little red right there. Let's continue. I'm sort of wondering if maybe we want to put Fonger in a different position and just see how he does. Let me go back real quick. Oh, never mind. I wanted to look. Okay. So let's just swap these two for right now. I'm just going to allow Fossil Fonger to figure out what he's good at. Oh, never mind. The exhaustion rates allow you to figure it out. Alright, so we'll have to buy some more dogs. Essentially, we're going to have to buy like a big fistful of dogs. And then, is that the unit of measurement for multiple dogs, for pluralized dogs? Anyways, we're going to have to get ourselves... Okay, so they're already heavy breathing. Let's get started with the feeding then. And then I'm going to try and keep the line spacing taken care of so that later in the game it doesn't, like, escalate on us. Having to fix a line now when it's only minorly messed up is way better than having to fix it later once it's super messed up. So, oh, we're actually out of food right now. Okay. 
Dogs are looking a little bit hungry based on the fact that the snow is suboptimal. Alright, and so I think one of our dogs here, yeah, it needs to be fed. There it is. I hear another dog making heavy breathing sounds, so let's throw a biscuit out and over there. Biscuit out and over there. The dogs appear to be pretty happy with the situation, although they are tiring a lot quicker than I'm used to. Luckily, we've got that upgraded feed bag. Ah, uh, come on. I want to feed the dog as much as possible. Oh, head bump. Okay, so that dog got its ability taken care of. Wheel dog's looking hungry, so let's go ahead and keep him fed. Front dog's looking hungry, throw that out there. Got a charge right there. Wheel dog's looking hungry again. Let's keep the line spaced properly. I'd love to bring this one home to a victory, but it said it was a short course, so I don't know if we're going to be able to do it. I think that we might be looking at a couple more procs that we need before we can actually consistently depend on the fact that we can outrun somebody in League 2. There it is. Very, very nice. Another victory for us. Our team is looking really, really strong right now. Team is looking good. They haven't shown any real weaknesses just yet. Fatigue did not go up at all, so that's good. That means we're running the dogs inside of their normal parameters. Let's see here. Let's go with running speed. When dogs get hungry, their speed will drop and your sled will slow down. Toss them food to liven them up. Okay, they seem pretty alive to me, but maybe they just need a little bit of reanimation. I will more than likely, let's run an errand. We're going to go to the dog sled office. And let's see if maybe we can find somebody to take our wheel position. Oh, look, we can, ah, we can see their skills now. Okay. So I guess once you've unlocked a skill on your own dogs, you can take a look and actually figure out what other dogs are good at too. We actually don't appear to have a whole lot of choices right now. Hmm. Okay, never mind. There's a white husky. Let's try the chocolate lab. Let's go ahead. We'll try the chocolate lab. It's got a skill that we haven't seen too. And his name is Striker. All right. I'm going to rename Striker Didgeridude. Can I put a the in front of it? It would be even better. The Didgeridude. Yeah, the Didgeridude. Awesome. And so now we've got a new dog. I can actually try and run this dog. Since Fossil Fong, our skill is so high anyways, I could try and put this dog in the wheel position. We'll just sort of see what happens here. How's Fatigue looking on triple tickets? Looking good? Okay. And it's going to be unfortunate. If I buy a dog right now that's not good at running in the wheel position, it is going to negatively affect us. Keep that in mind. I think they should make your funds decay as well. Oh, never mind. You pay your dues. They do decay. I was going to say, that seems like an obvious thing to me, but don't we have to buy, like, kibbles and things? Like, food is expensive for dogs. So let's swap. Let's try the didgeridoo out on this run and see how he does. Exhaustion rate's looking pretty low, but I don't know if that's due to the fact that the course is flawless. Okay, so the course is flawless. Let's run the didgeridoo. Let's see what happens. We need a wheel dog, though. We need a dog with a skillful wheel. And so if we can make that happen, I, I would prefer it. Or at least a dog that's able in the wheel position. Oh, that was my bad. I messed that up badly. Sorry, didgeridoo. Adjustment period. You're a little bit smaller than the other dog, so the aiming's a little bit different. There we go. Let's get everybody riding. I feel like we're going faster right now, but it might just be like wishing and hoping. Dogs are looking hungry. Let's throw out a couple of biscuits. There we go. I'm going to shift his position in the line after I throw the biscuit, though. All right. There it is. Keep everybody fed. Awesome. An easy way to get their fame up is to throw to the front dog and then throw to the back dog and have it land at the exact same time. There it is. Very, very good. Our front dog has managed to have a proc of her ability. Let's keep everybody adjusted. All right. No head bumps for right now. And final biscuit did make it into the dog's mouth. I was a little worried. That one felt slightly off. I felt like the throw was, you know, like when you throw something, you're like, oh, that's going to be off. Like, and it just sort of happens. Eh, that's kind of what I felt right there. Kind of what I was feeling. Let's try and keep him fed so that they don't get permanent fatigue. And the didgeridoo. Actually, not a bad race for our first, for a first run. We're in League 2 already, and our wheel dog did perfectly fine. Now, there is the slight chance that the didgeridoo might be being carried by the front two dogs. But I think the didgeridoo did okay. I don't think it was bad. I think it went all right. What do we have here? So we don't actually have the opportunity to ask about a other dog, but... Alright. 
Humbleberry has the competitive skill. When her skill kicks in, she can lay on the gas when an opponent is within spitting distance. Oh, so there's different types of charges too. Let's stay in this league for right now. I'd like to level up the didgeridoo dude first before I go any further. I What's this one's skill at? Skill level's at three. And what are these dogs at? Three. Okay, that's not bad. At least there's no decay on this dog right here. So, in the off time... I think, actually, I think we're about done with the episode. So, my name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me here at the Nerdcast for the next episode of Dog Sled Saga. I look forward to seeing you all in the next episode. Take care, everybody, and hi-do.